Welcome to my shop where I develop all the products for skyscraper guitars. I can't tell you how excited I am today to share this machine with you. I've been working on this design for a little over two years, I believe, and it all started when I figured out how to do cutaway forms for the then LMI machines. And out of respect for the folks at LMI who have made a huge impact on the guitar building world, I decided not to develop the entire machine. I was just going to develop the forms for doing cutaways with the existing LMI vendors. And last year when I heard that LMI was going to go out of business, I actually first reached out to them and offered to buy their IP. There were a few products like this that I was very interested in buying the rights to and the designs for. And when I reached out, they shared with me that their intellectual property was not available for sale. So it was at that time I said, okay, now I've got to develop my own machine, my own design to make this go. And I started full speed ahead making all of those things happen. A lot of these pieces will look fairly familiar to you, but I assure you each one has been redesigned and rethought to make it just a little bit better than some of those legacy products that we're used to. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you a few other products that we're working on at Skyscraper as well. We're developing a handful of things to replace those products that are in the, the niche that LMI served. We are here today though to talk about this side bending machine. And I want to take a little bit of a look under the hood and walk through each of the components and show you maybe how they're different than what you've seen in the past or different than other machines out on the market, uh, but then also how they're, how they're built to perform a little bit better. The first thing I want to talk about is the temperature controller and the temperature controller is really the heart of, of this machine. It makes sure that the temperature in the heating blanket is within a couple degrees Fahrenheit, so a degree or two Celsius as well. And it's a 110 volt unit right now. We are developing a 220 volt unit for the European and other foreign market. I think we're about the only country here in the United States with 110 volts. Uh, I could be wrong. I think Canada has 110. There might be some Asian countries that have 110 as well. But we will be developing a 220 volt unit for this as well. So you can see on the front an IEC connector for the heating blanket. There's two switches, a main power switch and then a blanket switch. So you can turn on the main power, set the PID to be whatever temperature it is that you want to use on your heating blanket or on for bending your sides. Once you get everything set up and ready to go, you switch switch on the heater circuit and it will fire up this blanket and start everything working. The heating blanket that we have that you can't see underneath this spring steel is a huge upgrade. It is a fiberglass jacketed silicon heating blanket. So the heating blankets that we've seen in the past have all pretty much been silicone and you use them 10 or 15 times and that rubber starts to heat up and bubble and after mm, maybe 20 guitars that thing has to go into the trash. This fiberglass jacket around this heating blanket makes sure that that silicone stays intact. Let's take a look at the cantilevered press arm on this. Most of the units out on the market right now that are doing a cantilever design are using an 80-20 type extrusion and they bolt together using a bunch of bits and pieces out of that erector set that is the 80-20 market and instead we're using aluminum tubing and then we're welding the joints on this just to make it a little bit extra stiff because there is a lot of pressure that comes back up from this press assembly. The waist form and sliding piece of this assembly is unique as well and it was redesigned number one to help put pressure evenly across this waste form. So you'll notice these waste forms are a little bit larger than what you'll see on a lot of other machines. And part of that reason is we want an accurate press. So when you bend your acoustic guitar sides, you want them to come out the same shape as this form. And one way to make that happen is just to have a larger die to use. But if you're swapping out from one guitar to the next, it's a pretty simple swap. Again, this is a rigid assembly. So it goes in here, we know that everything is aligned. And when I say everything, I mean each one of these waste forms is aligned to all the others in the assembly. And then there's just two thumb screws here that tighten up, and I'm just gonna put one in for now. There's two 
two of these thumb screws that tighten up and make sure that the shoulders of the waist form are pushing into the sliding gantry here. Once you have them, it's fairly straightforward. I do have a waist bending slat in here. So this is a piece of 020 blue steel, spring steel, and it presses down. And again, the waist slat extends the footprint of the waist forms here and makes sure that even further out from the waist forms, you're getting good pressure along the guitar form. Let's take a look at the roller assembly. And while this may look familiar in form factor to a lot of people, it's a complete redesign kind of from the ground up, looking at all the improvements that we could make on this assembly and still have it function in the way that a lot of people really like. The first thing I would point out is this tension assembly is where you see the most stress in the roller. And so we replaced what were a bunch of plastic parts here with a steel tube welded to a threaded rod. So that assembly can take an immense amount of pressure over time without any deformation and without any damage or fatigue in the system. Then next we put on a knurled thumb wheel here at the top. So you no longer have to have some kind of a hex key or any kind of tool outside of, of this machine itself. So you can just put tension in through, the, through these thumb wheels themselves. Another major improvement that we made in some of the legacy components, this whole assembly could kind of twist out of plane. And when you're trying to put even pressure over the length of a side of an acoustic guitar, you really want this to be a stable, stable format. So we wound up using a lot larger piece. Uh, instead of a dowel, we use a dimensional piece back here. And then we put two fasteners in on each side to keep it from racking and twisting. So everybody's been staring here at the orchestra model or the OM model, which also works for a triple O. One's just a 12 fret versus a 14 fret where you want that to join the body. All of these side benders, when you pick a form, all of them come with a free set of plans. I have formed a partnership with Gen 1 Luthier Supply. When I bought my first guitar plans, I bought them from Gen 1, and when I got them, I was just amazed at the level of detail and the drawing accuracy and how well drawn they were. My background's in architecture, you know, so I'm, I'm fairly picky about how drawings look and, and how well they're done, and I was just blown away by by the level of detail in those drawings. And then I come to find out that Dave, the owner of Gen 1 Luthier Supply is also an architect. So we share that, but uh, the drawings are of the caliber that I knew it would be very tough for me to do drawings that were any better than Gen 1's. So I called Dave and asked if, if we could maybe partner up on that. So uh, along with the form that you order, whenever you order a form, you're gonna get a set of plans, whether that's one of the Gen 1 plans, so that's the OM, the Dreadnought, the Grand Auditorium, or if you're gonna order a Robert O'Brien Classical, I'll give you the set of Robert O'Brien's plans. I've also formed a partnership, obviously, with, with Robbie O'Brien, on that and Robbie is just a fantastic fixture in the acoustic guitar building world. If you don't know who Robbie is, you should definitely check him out. Robbie, uh, I think it's O'Brien Guitars here on YouTube. But we've been staring at the OM model here, uh, this form. Up here we have the Robert O'Brien Classical, but I have it in the cutaway. So let's talk about our cutaway form and how that works. It's not the typical RAM that you see. That ram puts pressure kind of evenly all the way along the bend. And I, in my mind, it works a lot better to introduce the pressure along the length of the side rather than all at once in, in one spot. So essentially, you put your side material in here, the sandwich, the blanket, the slats, and the side in here. We bring our waist press down, and once it's not snug, uh, just close, kind of like we did earlier. Leave a little bit of a gap, maybe an eighth of an inch, a little bit more, and then we can hook on our cutaway bending form, and it will just gravity, There's these things weigh a little bit, gravity, let it press on it and start to form this upper bend. And then once it gets to a point where it's not wanting to bend anymore, we'll bring in our two screws here and then you can slowly tighten these guys down until we bottom out. And of course, you know, it's hard to do without a 
guitar side in there, but it'll bottom out and you can put a fair amount of pressure on it with these two screws on the sides. And that will do an incredible job of forming that cutaway. Once you have that done, then we use our roller and we come along this lower bout. Then we bring in the waist press all the way down to kind of finish out the bend and take out any gappage that may have occurred along the length of the form. I also want to show off our other two forms that we have. We have the Grand Auditorium here. This is, these two are the cutaways because you can see the stacks of forms that I have here in the back. Uh, to go digging for the pieces that I wanted was going to take me a little bit of time, so I just grabbed a couple of the cutaways that were handy. So we've got the cutaways for the Grand Auditorium, and then here's the Dreadnought here. All of the features that I've shown off on this machine today I think come together to create an incredible platform on which you can build an entire business around building acoustic guitars if that's what you want to do. If you're a home gamer and you're just wanting to build a guitar or two, this may also be the unit for you. We've tried to make it as affordable as we can. We've also developed what's going to become a rental program. So if you're someone who wants to build a guitar or two, or if you're somebody young just getting into the business, you can rent this machine. We're gonna have a program where you can rent this machine for four weeks. And in that four weeks, if you can bend 20 guitar sides or 30 guitar sides, go for it. You might be able to bend an entire year's worth of guitar sides within that four week period and then return the machine to us. One of the things that we're going to do, because we do want to support young guitar builders and, and their foray into a new business, which can be incredibly expensive, is if you rent these units over time, enough times that you would pay for the unit, we're just gonna tell you to keep it. And I, I always share with people, I'm not in this business to buy yachts and fancy houses. I'm in this business because I love music and I love guitar building. So it's our purpose to support the people out there who wanna do that for a living as well. The first 10 of these sidebenders are gonna be available today at skyscraperguitars.com. And if you don't make it in the first 10, don't fear, we're going to have a pre-order and the pre-order will not charge you until we're ready to ship on the next batch of units. So we're working on about 20 more of these as we speak. We've got them about halfway to three quarters of the way done, but it's gonna take us somewhere in the six to eight week range to get those deliverable. We're still waiting on some parts from some of our other suppliers to show up in order to continue to make them. But that will allow you to select what forms you want and it'll help us a little bit making sure that we don't make a bunch of forms that aren't the popular ones that, that maybe people don't want when we could be spending our time making the ones that people do want. Again, there's a link to our shop in the description of this video and it's also just skyscraperguitars.com for those who just want to type it in old school like me. I do want to show off a couple other products that are going to go some hand in glove with this, some doing other tasks around guitar building. The first thing I want to show is our outside forms. The outside molds are going to be available for all four of the different forms that we are selling for the sidebender. And that's the Dreadnought, the OM, the Grand Auditorium, and then the Robert O'Brien classical guitar. Each of them will come with a set of spreaders. One of the unique things about these outside molds is they are all going to have the ability to put the cutaway form into here. So it's just a tab type situation. And there's a steel pin, which of course I don't have within my reach, but those just slide in, slide back out, if you want to do a non-cutaway version, it'll be the same mold, and then you can just pop that in for the cutaway version. These are going to be available in about six weeks. We have all the designs done. We're just doing the production, starting the production on them now. If you order one of the side bending machines and you want an outside mold as well, we'll have a tick box on there and we'll notify you when those are going to be available and we'll put you first on the list to receive them. I know this is an acoustic guitar template, but we are going to have templates for all four of the acoustic guitar forms and molds that we're coming out with. So when you get the plans for those guitars, if you want a template, those will be available as well. We are also developing a handful of other products that have been abandoned since uh, LMI went out of business. One is what we're calling the fret sled. 
It is uh, similar to what LMI had, but it is different in the way that it works. There's not a spring-loaded contraption. It's actually very much simplified. There's a pin and a template that goes with that pin, and you slide your fretboard along the fret sled here, and you cut each of the frets individually. We'll also have versions of it. Some people have asked if we will have the zero fret versions available as well, and we will have those. It's, it's about a six thousandths of an inch difference in how the nut situates to the first fret. So we will have those available as well. And I've been working with a couple different blade manufacturers to supply some fret sawing blades. And this one in this hand is a very expensive blade. It is balanced. You can see the weights that are attached to it, or sorry, the plates that are attached to it to provide uh, that rigidity throughout the blade. But this is carbide tipped. This is the type of blade that you can have resharpened for the rest of your life. I don't know if it'll last a lifetime, but I'm pretty sure it'll last a lifetime for most people. Uh, the reason I hesitate on that as luthiers, we do saw some incredibly hard woods. So when you compare that with what other saw blades go through in their life, luthier blades have a really hard life. But these are carbide tipped blades and you can have them resharpened. So this is a, a lifetime type blade. Then we have a non-carbide version that we've worked on with a different manufacturer. These are fantastic blades. These will wear out over time. They're going to still last you a very long time. And you can see there's still thickness to this blade. So all the way up through about the last inch of the blade, we have thickness. And again, when you get blades that are as thin as these fret sawing blades, they tend to want to move once they get up to speed and start hitting material these extra thick plates provide stabilization through the cut that gives a, a cut that doesn't vary in thickness. So these are gonna be available on our website right now. I have a handful of them that I got from this manufacturer. The uh, carbide tip blades are going to be something that we'll have in the next, call it six to eight weeks, I believe. Last thing I wanna show off today is the O'Brien Guitars Mortise and Tenon Jig. So some of you are familiar with this. Robbie has sold plans to build these. LMI built their version of it and sold it. And this is what Robbie and I are calling V3. So it's a redesign for how it works. The old versions had a, uh, had a plate that kind of went back and forth down here. And we went through and redesigned it to just simply use these two thumb wheels here to be able to loosen up the top and tilt it. So the big idea is you put the body of your guitar here and then you tilt this platform until the space between this rod and the bridge where your bridge goes is the right dimension. And then you can lock this in. And what that does is the neck references off of a face that's parallel with this surface. So this angle will be the same exact angle that you need from your body to your bridge will be from the face of your neck to this tenon here. So this side of the guitar is for putting the mortise into the neck block of the guitar. It doesn't care what the angle of the top is. It's just a straight mortise that goes right into the body. You can adjust this template in and out to uh, adjust the depth of that mortise pocket. And I apologize, I'm missing a little bit of the hardware for clamping the body in. Um, but then we're going to have different templates for using a pattern type bearing bit on the router, using a collar system, and then also doing dovetails. So you'll have a mortise and tenon and a dovetail version of both pattern bits and uh, a collar set if that's how you prefer to do your work. One of the last pieces we're developing on this is not necessarily dust extraction, but dust mitigation, let's call it. This is an incredibly messy operation when you're carving out the mortise end of a guitar. So we're gonna put some shields up here in place and then we're gonna put a port on the side of this jig that will allow you to hook up your dust vac to it and at least mitigate some of that dust that flies during these operations. I know that was a lot to have thrown at you in one session. I apologize if it feels like it was coming through a fire hose there, but 
We have been working on a ton of stuff here and are super excited to share that with everybody. And again, the side benders will be available on skyscraperguitars.com. There are 10 of them right now. If you miss that initial 10, we're gonna have the pre-order. You won't be charged anything until those orders are ready to ship, but it'll allow you to check what forms you want and all of those types of things. So thanks again, everybody, and enjoy your guitar building.